Yeah, that is probably one of my favorite videos. Ads. Yes, it is. Yes, it that, is. That, that's captivating. <laughs> All right. Well, we got some. Right. I hope everybody enjoyed a little the lounge. We, we do want to try more networking. I know in previous years it's so action packed with talks, but hopefully people are getting to network and meet each other. Um, today, I'm excited to introduce Chris, AKA Namer Tips. Yeah. No and on this year. No and on this time. No, no, on this time, which is really cool. I like, I like. It. Of course, we respect everyone's decision about Anon or not, but you know, it's it's really cool. I think to see, yeah, see it's the person time, behind know, it's it. It's a time for everything. It's a time for everything. This is that year, Mike. This is that year. This is the year, fourth year. Like we're talking year. before. This the, is the year. Yeah. All right. So I'm excited uh -huh. for your session. Yeah, I'll let you take it away. Education, entertainment, and, uh, and empowerment. Empowerment. Right, That's important. Let's dive right, into it. Let's go, all right, let's go. all right. Thank you. So, everyone, it is such a pleasure to be here. Um, my name is Chris. I'm the senior strategy director for Namer Tips. Um, some of you all have may have encountered me online via social media through the Discord, and there's a lot of mystique and all of this other stuff. But um, I'm, it's a privilege to be here with you all today. Um, I've been taking in HandyCon uh, since the first day. And I have to say that I'm really impressed by many of the things that I've seen, right? Um, but to kind of roll it back a little bit and give you all just a little bit of information about Namer Tips. Um, Namer Tips is a advocacy and um, empowerment brand that was founded here in New York City. Um, for those of you all who don't know, I actually am an asset manager for IP management and development company here in NYC. So what that means in short is that we just work with uh, artists and creatives and leveraging their creative works and taking them to the next level and helping them to go ahead and gain a broader equity over their work and so on and so forth. So uh, why is that important, right? Um, that actually opened up the door. That's kind of, you know, what paved the way to this, this learning about handshake and just uh, the, the blockchain, decentralization and all, those, all of those other things, uh, creating a solution for the artists to express themselves, right? Um, so we kind of came in uh, through the Discord. Uh, we acquired some names, some of which some of you all might consider grails. Uh, I won't dive into them now. I don't want to get everybody into a frenzy. Um, but we have some names and we believe in the project, right? We believe in Handshake. We believe in digital identity. We think that everything starts with a name, right? Um, however, as this space has evolved, you know, it's interwoven with crypto. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that tend to be discussed, speculated about. And then there are things that are kind of left in the distance, right? Um, right now, we're at an inflection point. And, and I'm going to do something because we commissioned an artist here in New York. Um, to put together some unique pairs of shoes. And the reason I'm going to show these shoes is because as I move forward in this talk, I want us to think tangibly, right? Not speculatively, not, uh, not from the standpoint of conceptually, but we need to think tangibly if we're going to ensure that this technology and technologies in the future truly benefit who? The people, right? Um, in, the, in a lot of the talks that I've heard today, many of the the devs, I mean, you guys are brilliant. I mean, the women that have spoken, phenomenal. However, it's that gap, that one gap that is, we haven't heard family. We haven't heard children, right? Um, we've heard talks of how decentralization can benefit the people, but we haven't really dove into how things can resonate as opposed to imitate. So that's what this talk is about. Um, but before I do that, I want to go ahead and show you, you know, we had an artist create 10 pairs of these, right? And these shoes kind of speak to, they're more symbolic about the space taking a step in the right direction. If you all notice, we have the handshake and the name base logo there. Um, so these shoes are not, the, the logos that are featured are not a matter of 
who was prioritized, but it encapsulates what the past year has been about. Browsers, you see there was talk of Opera and Bitcoin and ENS and all of these other things. But the most important part is what's on the inside of the shoes. If you notice, there are chains and there are symbolic icons for people. And one is black and white and the other is uh, inverted to white and black. And the reason that I wanna emphasize that is because as we move into this next chapter, we really have to consider whether or not the people are gonna be empowered or for lack of better words, are they, are they going to be uh, enslaved, so to speak? So with the education, entertainment and empowerment, the focus that I want you all to keep in mind is that there is an opportunity and there's a responsibility, right? Um, let me just really get something, let me get something out of the way really quick. Uh, a lot of people are talking about ICANN's next round of names. I wanna be clear about something. Handshake has over 10 million TLDs registered to date. That is nothing to sneeze at, right? There's no other TLD naming service or protocol that has that many names. So by default, they will have to play catch up. That's the first thing. Um, right now, as it stands, ICANN has 1,600 plus TLDs that it offers. The next round in 2026 is not going to be 1,600 plus. So I say that to say this, there's not really a really big reason to be concerned about this new round, but there is something to be concerned about, which is the noise, right? There's a lot of noise in the blockchain right now. There are a lot of people who are saying a lot of things. And what keeps this from really being out of control is the fact that it hasn't escaped the bubble. The bubble, escaping the bubble is going out into the real world and connecting with real people. Um, the people who have handshake TLDs and TLDs in particular have a very unique opportunity, right? And they have a very unique responsibility. And the first one comes with education. Uh, there's this saying that if you build it, they will come, right? Um, I believe that if you help them to understand, they'll truly benefit from it, right? Um, there has been a lot of building in the h &S community. Um, of course, it's not nearly as much as what we would like um, to, you know, like it to be. However, there will be more. And I think that that's not, it's not an issue because there are some brilliant minds. And I think the more devs that are connected with outside of the h &S ecosystem, once they are introduced to the potential of the project, um, I think that they'll come in with no problem. However, the educating portion, either for them and the individuals that you look to benefit, if it's missing, there's gonna be this void there, right? Um, there are a lot of bright people. Somebody said in the last space, uh, I think it was Nathan's space, and Nathan is awesome, by the way, right? Um, someone said, oh, you need brain cells for this, uh, <laughs> this session. Um, I, I got it, I got it, right? So if we're saying this in the spaces that we're in, right? We understand what's going on. We understand how valuable decentralization is, how powerful the h &S tech is. We understand that h &S is the web for a pinnacle in many respects, right? Um, a lot of people mix it up when they talk about, they try to compare SLDs to TLDs. There's no comparison, right? However, with uh, HNS and the ownership of TLDs, I think that it provides a phenomenal opportunity. But in, in order to capitalize on what that opportunity is and expound upon that value, we have to make sure that we don't repeat the same mistakes from previous generations, specifically the earlier days of the Internet. Many of you all understand that right now, the average person can't tell you what a domain name is, right? And this is despite them searching websites on their phone and all of this other stuff. So there are individuals that are completely in the dark about what digital identity is. So if you come in and you, you want to talk to them about centralization and decentralization, um, they're, they're lost before you can even catch them. So when it comes to education, it's really, really important to enter, you know, we've an educational component into what it is that you're building. A lot of people I've, uh, I've spoken to away from the space um, have asked about that because I want you all to know that I handle IP management on the back end. So I have an opportunity to speak to individuals that are in, um, they're in decent decision-making positions in their companies and they're looking ahead. And in speaking with them about certain things, they look for certain cues, right? Cues of progress. And the thing is, is that if you have something that you're offering 
and they have a consumer base or a customer base or an audience, they want to ensure that whatever it is that they embrace does not break that connection with their audience, right? So the way that that connection can be broken is if they introduce something there to their audience that they don't understand and that the audience doesn't understand. And where there's confusion, there's a loss of profit, there's a loss of opportunity and a whole host of other things. Coming into this next chapter, I wanna encourage you all to do something. I wanna encourage you all to embrace providing the explanation and extra emphasis on a digestible explanation as to what handshake is, right? How it works, right? Um, and some people would sit there and say, well, where's the money in that? Where's the money in education? I've had that conversation too. And the reality of it is, if you wanna know where the money in, if you don't believe that there's any money in education, well, talk to the textbook companies, talk to the colleges. These are people who have been, I mean, organizations and industries that have been notorious for really, generating a lot of revenue off this thing that a lot of people on web three think is just frivolous right and that moves me into the next opportunity and a responsibility which is to entertain right um we live in in a, in a content creator society right now i think that a lot of people in the hns community uh are missing out on the opportunity to connect with creatives right um you can create platforms you can create wallets, you can create apps. However, there has to be that element that connects with the people. Um, I made a, I had a conversation with someone not too long ago about what would bring people into Web3. And I was explaining to them that it's not as complicated as some individuals make it. If you get the right name that endorses a particular thing, you will have people that will flood in and won't understand anything. And then you will have this kind of like reverse issue of having to ensure that they're not just in it because it's popular, but they're in it because it provides value. Right. Um, I think that there are a lot of opportunities for people in the handshake community to connect with creators, to connect with artists, to connect with musicians, writers, a whole host of people who are looking to, um, to take control of, over their careers. Um, we talk about with Handshake, do you hear the word sovereignty, right? Um, it's It involves being able to be and being able to control without restriction. And if you don't know much about the music industry, the film industry, and just many things that are art-based, uh, right now there's a battle, right? There's a battle for artists to take back creative control, um, for them to go ahead and exercise their rights, not have to deal with censorship. I'm pretty sure that many of you all have heard about the TikTok situation. Um, someone in an earlier space said, you know, we need to create the next TikTok on Handshake. And the first thing that I thought about was how about create something that's better than TikTok, right? Um, TikTok had its time. It's going through, you know, its phase right now. However, the creators are actively searching for another place to go. Think about all of the creatives that were on TikTok that uh, they built lifestyles. They, you know, they, they funded a lot of their things. And, you know, just out of nowhere, you have this entire situation that's coming in that's going to up in. Uh, they're going to migrate to different platforms ultimately. However, if it happened there, it can happen someplace else, right? Um, so I just want to encourage you all to think about the entertainment element and understand that with that comes the ability to empower people. This is the most important part, right? Um, empowering people is not just them owning their name. Um, it's them being able to leverage every part of the handshake ecosystem. That's everything from the token, the names, being able to go ahead and create SLDs and so on and so forth. What you all may not know is that uh, the Name or Tips team, it's only 12 of us, right? Um, we're not a really, really big group, but we are very passionate about what it is that we do. Um, we've done a lot of back-end purchasing of Handshake SLDs, right? Um, for support purposes, because we see that everyone in the community is building and we wanna go ahead and make sure that we can assist in every way possible. Yes, we have names staked with Namecheap and Inserca, um, many of which we haven't spoken about, and it's for a reason. In the Handshake community, everybody is together. 
Everything that one TLD owner at this phase, everything that one TLD owner does affects the next, right? Everything that one TLD holder does affects registrars and registries. It's literally, I love the decentralization element of it, but we definitely have to embrace the responsibility aspect of it. Um, I'm going to give someone their flowers right now. Um, Noel, you know, Noel is doing a lot of real world work. Um, no caught my attention and I, you know, I went back to my team and I shared um, no story with them um, when he was speaking at the Capitol. Right. He's stepping into the political sector and that's a really, really big part of at least wedging yourself into this whole uh, season of adoption. Right. Um, everybody is launching a browser right now. Everybody's launching a wallet. But Handshake has another advantage with the fact that it is relative to Bitcoin. That right there is a strong marketing point, right? Um, I think something else exceptional that happened in the recent year was the embrace of the Ethereum blockchain, right? Um, the reason I thought that was important is because on the Ethereum blockchain, there's a lot of creative things happening, right? I think Chango was speaking in a space yesterday and she was talking about, you know, uh, the, 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 the pictures with the dogs and the hats, right? That is content. No matter how anyone may feel about it, it's content. Dare I say it's feel good for some people. I said in the space earlier that right now, real people, the mo a majority of real people are distracted with real life. So if you're going to bring them in, um, you can't push the problem, right? Especially if they don't understand it. The problem is it's real, right? Um, censorship, everything that we've covered is real. However, um, a lot of people are, a lot of everyday people aren't aware of that. And I just think that in the handshake community, there can be a more close knit effort to ensure that people understand that, but not just through a technical lens. So I'll give you all a good example. Earlier this year, Namer Tips did assault, we uh, licensed uh, a genre called Rhythmic Speaking, right? Because um, we work with the creative that owns the trademark to Rhythmic Speaking. Uh, we licensed it and we had, we commissioned a project put together called Deeper Than Names. It's actually the soundtrack for a motion picture. An act, the motion picture is put together, right? You all don't know that this community is close knit, but there are people on this side that are rooting for you all. They get it. However, they also understand that the people have to get it. But on this side, we're not devs. Never have we proclaimed to be. However, we are content people. We do connect with individuals. Uh, last year, uh, at the end of December, we wrapped up a focus group. We had a focus group for uh, the age group of 10 up to 17. And the objective was to introduce them to digital identity and get some raw feedback on how they perceive names and TLD extensions. And you'd be surprised, right? Um, a lot of the young people, they were really fond of the alternative names. Dot com and one of the uh, polls that we had, and this was in person, by the way, uh, one of the polls that we had. Dot, dot com did not even it didn't even rank. You'd be surprised what young people were into, which made us very excited about emoticons. They showed extreme enthusiasm about emoticons. And it was in that particular focus group that we realized that, listen, if this is going to work, the people in the space, whether it's in the H&S space, ENS, whatever. If you're going to be in the digital identity space, you have to factor in family and children. It would be it would be beneficial to. I'm not going to say you have to, but it would be beneficial to because believe it or not, ask the toy industry. The toy industry does very well appealing to children. And I want to encourage you all to just keep that in mind as you all are moving forward. Um, you all are building great things. Right. But the goal should be to build things that resonate, but don't imitate. Right. Things are going to pop up every day turn of every corner, right? But that's not something that I feel that the individuals in this community need to chase. I don't feel that they can afford to chase it. Handshake is going to have its time. It's coming. You hear it coming from me. Now, some of you all may say, hey, I'm not trying to hear anything you're saying. But for those who are listening, Handshake's time is coming, right? But you have to remain steadfast and you have to understand 
that your audience is broader than this bubble, right? Handshake is a solution, but it's also an opportunity. And you guys are so excellent and passionate and focused. I'm looking at all the code across the screen and I'm like, you guys put in a lot of time and energy. And before I leave, I wanna give you all some, some nuggets, some things to move forward with, right? Um, these are some of the things that I think that handshake TLDs would be ideal for. Do with this what you may, right? Um, and, and this is five key things. One key thing, we already know domains, web addresses, email, uh, Thunderbolt, the phone call thing, very innovative, looking forward to that. Um, but just using TLDs for anything that has to do with a means of contact, right? Another thing that handshake TLDs would be great for is, um, you know, uh, and I have my notes here, virtual property addresses. Um, a lot of people are not giving enough attention to virtual spaces, but I think that'll come in due time, especially with the gamify element of things picking up. When you think about finding virtual spaces, anyone who's used, utilized them uh, up until this point, you'll know that they're coordinate based, right? You have to put in X39 and Y negative 56. That's going back to the days of typing in IP addresses, uh, IP addresses to find websites. We're not going backwards, we're moving forward. Handshake TLDs are great for that because if we have, uh, say for instance, we have .name or tips. If we assign house .name or tips to our virtual property, it can take you to that property, but it goes a little bit deeper when you have a structure on that property. We're gonna say a house with bedrooms and bathrooms. Here we have an opportunity to say, you know, if we have a living room in the house, we can say lr.house.namer tips. And that takes you to that specific location in that virtual space. So I want you all to think along those lines. Another thing would be uh, event tickets and incentive tokens. Um, the event and venue space is very lucrative. Um, however, ticket scalping and things of that nature um, are very prevalent. And then providing custom tailored experiences is key. We know that we're in a space where people are really big on NFTs and so on and so forth. But if you're going to offer people real value, give them keys to an expanded experience. And I think that those who are uh, interested in that will know exactly what to do with that. Um, the fourth thing, product and service identifiers. Um, think new barcodes. I think that right now a lot of people are not really paying attention to the fact that there are there's a big uh, flow of evolution that's happening in the documentation sector. Um, California, not too long ago, uh, was discussing bringing, or I think that they're actually moving on it, um, bringing uh, titles for vehicles onto the blockchain. This is a time to really push the security that comes with Handshake and uh, the naming system and, and helping individuals recognize that just bringing something on chain is not enough, right? Uh, once everybody gets past the hype phase of bringing things on chain, that's when we're gonna have the security issue, right? And then we're gonna see a lot of these projects that are up today, we're gonna see them start to fall by the wayside, one after another, and only the most secure and most valuable ones, and in some cases, the most popular ones are gonna still be standing. And this is where I think Handshake is really going to see its success and it's going to see its growth. Um, last but not least, I think that Handshake TLDs will be great for content channels. Um, a lot of people don't recognize that there's another shift that's happening with content. Right now, um, OpenAI is going through some things with uh, the New York Times and, you know, AI is coming into play and a lot of people are getting really protective of their uh, content. And like I said, you know, I'm, I, you know, I work for an IP management group, so IP protection is really important. A lot of you guys might wonder, you know, uh, Namer Tips has not put anything out notable, right? Um, we've made contributions, we sponsored on the front end and the back end of some things, but no substantial products, right? Um, and the reason for that is because we have to ensure that any, because everything that we do is really content rich and content based, we have to ensure that everything that we do protects the interest of the creator. Um, we don't want to go ahead and be a corporate and just releasing things onto an, onto an insecure, I mean, an unsecure ecosystem. Um, and then next thing you know, artists and their work um, kind of, you know, fall victim to uh, the lack of maturity for lack of better words. And, that, and that's nothing against 
anyone in the handshake space. That's just in blockchain in general. Um, but I think as the security, you know, beefs up, so to speak, and people start to focus more on that, I think that you're going to have a lot of creatives that are going to migrate their portfolios into the blockchain space because it just makes more sense to do so. Um, and I, I want you all to keep this in mind before this space wraps up. Um, you guys are doing excellent work. Um, it can be a thankless job at times, but I want you all to know that you all have people that support you. Um, and now that the, the Anon side has kind of set to the side, I want, I want to invite you all because we have some great projects that are being released in the coming weeks and um, the movie particularly. In the movie, we want to go ahead and spotlight some of your TLDs and your SLDs. So I want you all to reach out uh, to me via email at chris at namer.tips. And I want you all to submit your best SLDs, your best four SLDs and TLDs. And we're going to go ahead and work to get those featured in the first ever blockchain themed movie, digital identity movie. It's a first. It's the first. So, um, I'm going to drop the links for the soundtrack. You guys take a listen. Uh, follow us on X. Um, I like to say on the record, thank you to the team that helps me. I know you guys hear my voice, but um, I've just been chosen to be the, the, the mouthpiece. Um, and, and I thank them and I thank you all. Mike and all of the sponsors, Bitmain, this is the fourth annual Handycon, guys. Don't sleep on the fact it takes a lot to make in events happen. So I'm thinking, Mike, at this pace, Andy Khan might have to be in person next year. Yeah, I mean, we need to do it. It's, yeah, I mean, we can we start planning now. Next year is in person, definitely, Chris. Thank I'm you so much. I'm saying it on the record. If if Handy Khan is going to be in person, you all have Damer Tips as support as a sponsor. Okay. Wow. So let's. All right. Thank all you right. so much. Thank That's you so much. It. All right. Great. We still have a few more minutes. I, I don't know if there's some. Uh, I, know uh, I don't know if there's some questions or points. I'm actually. I, I guess maybe you can't disclose clients, but it's pretty cool that you work with IP in New York. I'm sure there's some pretty yeah. high-profile clients you're working with, and I, I think maybe if there's some ways you could bridge. You know, I think if we have these, everybody always thinks if we get some kind of influencer or some kind of like big name promoting it. They always Listen, think that. Way. You know, so we work with some professional athletes, some very talented individuals, right? We work with some professional athletes and some organizations that really focus on giving back. In my early days before I joined Namer Tips, um, I was a youth services specialist in the Midwest. So I was responsible for putting, to, uh, putting together programs for at-risk youth. And so when I came to uh, the IP management team, uh, it tapped into my creative side. And so through them, I was able to meet a lot of fantastic people. A lot of fantastic people that, believe it or not, are more open-minded than you think. They're okay, that's great. So D. Watson, I've seen this person recently joining our sessions and wants more education. I think they said in a previous one, um, may, seems like they're interested in more education. If you, yeah. You know. Yeah, so we'll be rolling out uh, what well, we've been working on. Our major project that we've been working on is the first ever creative blockchain-based library. Um, we believe that libraries have done some phenomenal things here in the States, and we think that they can do some phenomenal things in a blockchain space. And so that's where we've been focusing our attention, hence me referencing virtual land and so on and so forth. So um, we'll be rolling that out, and I'll do, you know, it'll probably come from me. And then individuals will be able to visit the library regularly and get those lessons and educational sessions 24-7. Okay. It seems like there's a boxing match forming in the chat for our in person. <laughs> in the chat, yeah, crazy stuff. Yeah, I'm looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're they're having a good time, and I love I love the personality of the community. Um, you know, I just you know we we have to remember that there's a time for everything, right? And um, as long as we know when to strike and doing and saying certain things, I think that we'll, we'll be just fine. The space will grow just fine. You know, so Handshake is where it is. 10 million plus TLDs registered, Mike. Yeah, that's, that's it. That, that's yeah, that's, that's a big deal. That's nothing to sneeze at. They're talking exactly. about all the next round of names from ICANN. I'm like, listen, people, they're not going to roll out any more than 1,600 names. I can probably be certain. True, true. You know, so, you got right. 10 million possibilities to build something beautiful. 
on each TLD. So um, we have some great ones. So look out for it. We have some names. Take that name cheap. And we're going to okay. roll them out. And, and we yeah, we'd love to hear. I think, oh, yeah, yeah, we should all support each other. Way. And, you know, it's a great way. All right. All right, yeah. Chris. I think we're going to wrap right. it up. And thank you again for sharing. And, yeah, you've, you've sponsored in previous events uh, and everything. And your giveaways have been really appreciated. We appreciate everything you and Neymar Tips do, do. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, I appreciate you and everyone that's partaking. You all have one. Okay, great. Okay. All right, thank care. you. Bye.